Welcome back to the Xbox Basement, everybody. My name is John, and here I cover all things Xbox. Quick reminder, if there's some news that you want to jump straight to, you can find chapters down in the description. Let's kick it off with some good news. Xbox Series X and S has passed over 600,000 sales in Japan. Currently, we're looking at the Series X at 285 and the Series S at about 315. Now, of course, Microsoft hasn't released official numbers, and we all kind of believe that it's because they've been losing the console wars for a really long time now. If we look at PlayStation 5, they are sitting at about 5 million, while Nintendo Switch is absolutely dominating with 30 million. So I'm sure you're asking yourself, John, why are you bringing this up? It's only 600,000 compared to millions. Well, our good friends over at VG Charts have been keeping specs about the sales for Xbox in Japan for a while. And this is why it's significant for Japan specifically. If we look back at this chart, we can see that the Xbox One only sold about 100,000 units in Japan. So the really good news for Microsoft is, hey, we've sold over five times of what we did for last console in Japan. And if you didn't know it, it is a big deal for Xbox to grow substantially in Japan, mostly because they have Sony and Nintendo, two homegrown consoles that are native to their country. However, if we look at the Xbox 360 sales, we can see that for the lifetime, it's about 1.6 million. But it is showing the growth potential in Japan for Xbox after the Xbox. One. And I think this is really good news for Xbox as a whole. Now, you guys may have gotten an email from Xbox. No, I'm not talking about an email with new updates and features. And no, I'm not talking about an email asking you to sign up for the Xbox credit card. If you didn't see the video where I talked about Xbox offering a credit card, go check that out. It is ridiculous. But you may have gotten an email from Xbox asking to gauge your interest in a portable Xbox console. Now, I am an Xbox insider, but did not actually receive an email from Xbox. Microsoft released a short survey for some users via email. Some of the survey's questions range from handheld gaming systems that the players use. And it also asks about the importance of Xbox Game Pass and cloud gaming in deciding which games to play. Supposedly, this email went out to Xbox users at random, and it is important to note that this is not an official statement from Xbox saying, hey, we've got a handheld coming out. And it seems like any time we see things like this, the rumors really start to fly. And even back in February, Sony was supposedly working on a potential new handheld. And this is just my opinion that Sony should not be making an independent portable system. And before you think that I'm just hating on Sony because I'm an Xbox channel, let me just say that I really enjoyed the PSP and the PS Vita. I think they were way ahead of their times and as far as advancing portable gaming technology. But those two reasons that I listed right there are exactly the reasons they shouldn't be getting back into this. Of course, a rumor is just a rumor, but if I were Xbox, I would seriously be looking at Sony's track record and asking ourselves the question, is making a dedicated Xbox portable device even something we should be considering? Because between things like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally, Xbox has a lot of options. If you saw my last video talking about the Amazon Fire Stick, we're seeing more and more Xbox push into other people's hardware for making their gaming more portable, more universal everywhere. And as much as people really want it, I don't think a portable Xbox should really be a thing. Not when we have something like the ROG Ally that can support and play Game Pass just fine. And I know that that is an unpopular opinion. We've got some really great news for you, Fallout 76 players. Fallout 76 is finally getting one of its most requested features, which is of course companion. As of right now, you can actually only tame creatures in Fallout 76, however, they are not permanent, and this was actually teased back in 2021. Now, of course, Fallout 76 actually released on the Xbox One, of course, it was a huge debacle. But I think with the success of the Fallout show, we're seeing more and more people that want to get into the Fallout universe, and regardless of what you believe about the game as a whole, you have to give Bethesda credit for putting in serious work for up 
updates and improvements into this game. And believe me, I am one of these people that don't believe we should be releasing games until they're actually done anyway, but to take something like this that was seemingly going to be a failure and really working at it to make it a success is also something in this day and age that we really don't see. It is a lot more common to see things like Redfall where there's just a terrible release and then companies get shut down. There was a huge map expansion that just came out and you probably saw ads for this for Skyline Valley. And while this has not been made official, we do have it on really good authority that this is nearing completion. So if you're a dedicated Fallout 76 player, look forward to this amazing companion expansion coming soon. Last week, you may have noticed an error code just trying to sign into your Xbox. This happened on July 2nd and a lot of people were getting this error code right here. I myself was actually trying to play my Xbox and it also encountered this error code. I had plugged it into Google and nothing really came up. The issue that was affecting me is that I couldn't actually sign into my Xbox, which I thought was really strange because I wasn't trying to play online. So in the future, if we run into this again, I just wanted to let everybody know that there is a sort of workaround for this. Number one, even being logged out, you can go into your settings and disconnect completely from the internet. Once you're disconnected from the internet, try signing in again. For me, it worked perfectly and I was able to play some of my games that I have pre-installed or on a disc. Now this really threw the internet into a tizzy saying, yeah, it's annoying. Are there any kinds of refunds? I want more free games just when I had a BF3 session planned. And this really kind of made me laugh and sympathize with people at the same time. Seeing these comments really made me think, wow, maybe we shouldn't be relying so hardcore on Xbox Live. And I know what you're thinking, John, you sound like a crazy person. You have an Xbox channel and you're telling people not to play on Xbox. Well, that's actually not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying in instances like this, maybe we can show a little more patience. Because Xbox doesn't make any type of promise for actual service uptime, I personally don't think we should be entitled to any sort of compensation for this temporary downtime. And this kind of got my wheels turning of, you know, how many things does Xbox actually maintain online? And in what I'm sure is a short list, these are all the services that Microsoft maintains your account and profile, friends and social activity, devices and networking, multiplayer gaming, cloud gaming, apps and mobile. And this is a ton of stuff with a ton of servers. I don't think it's unreasonable to assume that there's gonna be some hiccups every now and then. Now, I've been trying to end every episode with a spotlight on a game. And I saw this about July 1st or 2nd, where Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 is coming to Game Pass. And I was actually pretty hyped for this. I was like, okay, I really enjoy playing Smash Bros. So I thought this was a really cool thing for Xbox users to have. Now, if you are a fan of Smash Bros and you're a Game Pass subscriber, I really think that you should download this one and give it a try. And even if you're not a fan of the fighting genre per se, this is more of a party game in general and overall a more fun element to it. Now, I did actually install and play this game over the weekend. My favorite person so far has actually been Nigel Thornberry. And of course, you guys know that I am big Ninja Turtle fan, so I couldn't resist using the Ninja Turtles as well. Now, this is going to be in the same vein as Smash Bros, but I wouldn't do a one to one comparison with it. I will admit it was weird to see Garfield, yes, Garfield the cat in a fighting game. But whether you're a new school or an old school fan of Nickelodeon, all the characters in this game are specifically chosen and they're going to bring back a lot of that nostalgia. So if you guys are a Game Pass subscriber, download this one and check it out. Of course, there is online play and it's just a really good, fun, quick play game overall. If you enjoy goofier things and especially if you're a Nickelodeon fan. And that is all the news for today. Thanks for tuning into the channel. If you want to stay up with more of the Xbox news, you can check out some more videos I've done right here.